concept of ahimsa is uh, not present in Islam in the same way that we have it in Jainism, Hinduism, and uh, Buddhism. And uh, you cannot, of course, find any mention of nonviolence in, in the Quran. Uh, but um, there are two points which are very important, and th these, are, these two points are missed most of the time when people say Islam is a religion of violence. Uh, because of 9-11, because of uh, terrorism, because of this, because of that, because of Al-Qaeda, because of ISIS. This is very wrong. Actually, um, maybe uh, those who actually, like Abdul Ghaffar Khan who, or Mullah Azad, who were very close to the Islamic texts, uh, who worked with the Islamic texts in different uh, times of the work with Gandhi, uh, what they take out is mostly the idea of peace, which goes back to Islam itself. The word Islam, like uh, Salam and Shalom in, in Hebrew, which means peace. So one is peace. The other one is actually concepts like uh, Muhabbat and service and patience, sabr, you know, patience. I think that we need to have a new, and this is what my work actually comes in. I, I think that we need to have a new reading of Gandhi, a new reading of nonviolence, a new reading of nonviolence in history a new approach to ahimsa and nonviolence in general and try to think even nonviolence in our democracy, liberal democracies as we call them, because we, I, if I have to say it in one word, um, uh, there is no creation of democracy without nonviolence, there is no restoration or sustainability of uh, democracy without nonviolence. Uh, democracies die very easily as we can see around us. They can die very easily. And the only power can, which can save them uh, through dissent, through dissidence, through questioning is nonviolent way of questioning. That's the most important. We cannot save them with violence. Yeah. There is no way you can save. Actually, violence kills democracies. Yeah. I, um, turns them into uh, dictatorships. Both exile and imprisonment were both uh, schools of thought for me. Actually, they educated me a lot, and uh, when you when you are confronted with uh, uh, with this form of violence, I actually again you have to make a choice. Uh, should I return the violence to those who have made violence to me? Should I be bitter? Um, and uh, on that level, I tried not to have any bitterness uh, because my models in, in uh, the models in my mind were people like Mandela, you know. Uh, when Mandela gets out of uh, his prison in 1990, he says, one of his famous quotes is, he says, uh, when I t turned back and I looked in my time of imprisonment, I didn't have any bitterness. Because I knew that if I have this bitterness, I'm still in prison. So he, it's kind of a liberation, you know. And this liberation is very spiritual. I think this, uh, again, for me also, that was a very spiritual and it actually intensified my work on nonviolence. So the message is always there. Look at the Arab Spring. Right. The message comes out again. Uh, every, it, it comes out in Egypt. It comes, comes out in Tunisia. It comes out in Iran in the Green Movement 2009. So that's what puts nonviolence always uh, aside and, uh, on, on the, on, on the fact, in the fact that people see the violence, but when they, they can always go and pick up what's left of all these writings, of all these experiences of nonviolence, of all these messages, and work with it. And always thinking in other terms, and again the questioning. If you see Muslims who are violent in today's world, like the jihadists, it doesn't mean that one or Muslims cannot be nonviolent. It's quite the contrary. I, we see a lot of Muslims who, in the name of Islam, actually practice uh, nonviolence. The same thing with uh, Christians and with many others, actually. I think that um, nonviolence is uh, very much uh, there, again, as a philosophy, and it's a philosophy which belongs to our future. I'm, I'm very sure of that, uh, you know, and, and the reason why I'm sure about that is that the younger generations are realizing that the world which has been, in the, in the modern world, which has been actually uh, put in order by um, new ways of educating, new ways of uh, uh, using a rational, uh, instrumental rationality, is a world which is destructive. 
and we need to have more questioning on it. So they go back and they look at all these movements and they add civil disobedience, uh, add uh, what I call obligation to disobey. Actually, it doesn't mean that we, if we have laws, because politicians, they say, oh, well, we make you laws, they're lawmakers. We make you laws and you have to accept them. I said, why should we ac accept anything that which comes from you? Uh, you know, so the questioning is very important, and I think that the nonviolence, uh, as a message, uh, takes us. Um, it it has a very realistic view of the tragic destiny of mankind, of the humankind, but at the same time, it shows the way to this tragic destiny of humankind, which is actually how we can be better people. But at the same time how can we live with our surroundings, including the planet. Mm -hmm.